uh, uh, Mega Man, what, why aren't you inside the train? Me uh, uh, I know you're a robot, but I'm pretty sure robots are allowed inside the train. Just, uh, just get inside! This show is made possible by my generous supporters on Patreon. Welcome to my new patrons this week, Jeff Chow. Thanks, Jeff. Hello, hello, hello. I am the Gray Man, and welcome to Mega Man 4. Um, so I have to say, uh, I'm really flattered so far, um, reading, uh, the comments, uh, in a bunch of the Mega Man episodes so far. I'm really happy that not only are people enjoying this, but they're enjoying, um, a lot of the trivia that I've, uh, kind of been sharing about, uh, Mega Man and Mega Man history. Um, so thank you for that. I'm really glad that you guys like it. That being said, um, I don't know if I have a, a ton of trivia about this one, for the simple fact that, um... Is there a way I can get rid of that? Okay, sorry. Yeah, I was trying to see if I could get rid of the start button. Um, okay, we're good. Um, I already started the game. Why did it still have the start button there? Um, so as I was saying, I don't know if I have a ton of trivia about this game, unfortunately. Um... Because you had the troubled production of the first game, the troubled production of the second game, and some things not being fully realized with the third game. By all accounts, this is the Mega Man game where everything just went, like, really, really swimmingly. Um, production was really smooth. They were able to add everything they wanted to uh, to the game. Uh, it sold well. It was received well. Like, uh, So, yeah, everything turned out super good for... Capcom and uh, the development team. So that should, that should be a that should be a really interesting slogan. Mega Man Four. Everything worked out fine. <laughs> um, but I do have to say, uh, this game is kind of interesting for me because it was probably the first one I remember being really hyped for. Because I beat Mega Man Three uh, the summer after kindergarten, and then this was about to be released when I was about I think halfway through first grade, and I just loved Mega Man so much at that point. And then I'm like, oh my god, like, when's, when's Mega Man 4 gonna come out? I bet it's gonna be, like, really, really cool. Um, and it was, so that's kind of the end of that story. Um, and even from a design standpoint, uh, the game went extremely well. They had something like, uh, 70,000 submissions from, uh, fans for potential Robot Masters, and according to... KG Inafune, because that, that was uh, the part that he had the most um, involvement in during development. Like, they barely changed a bunch of the designs. Like, every single one of them that they picked just kind of worked perfectly for what they were kind of going for. Um, and this one's also kind of special because it's the first one that introduces a villain aside from uh, Dr. Wily. It introduces... Uh, Dr. Cossack, you know, the, um, the, the Russian scientist who's, um, trying to take over the world. Cause, you know, a, a, a Russian trying to, trying to take over the world. I mean, that's, that's like a completely ridiculous idea. I mean, who would even, um, think of something like that? Um, <laughs> let's, uh, let, 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 let's move on. <laughs> oh, that being said, I know I just complimented the robot masters of this game, but I think Toad Man has to be the worst one, because look at this. I am not doing anything. I am just shooting him normally with the regular weapon, and all he does is hop, skip, and a jump over me. Dude, like, do you, do you just have some kind of compulsion to jump over things when you get shot? Because this is not working out for you. Your OCD is proving to be... Your death knell. You should have gotten treatment for it. But now you can't because you're dead. <laughs> I was <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I absolutely love this game, but this <laughs> that had to be the most ridiculous boss fight ever. <laughs> he didn't even put up a resistance. <laughs> um, and the more I think about it, um I'm gonna I'm gonna gonna throw something out there. Kind of replaying these games and revisiting these, I think... Honestly, I think this has to be my favorite Mega Man game. Like, not to put down uh, 1 through 3, which are kind of considered the classic ones, but this is just... I don't know. Like, and maybe it was because I was so hyped for it, but... It has the most balance, it has the best weapons, it has absolutely gorgeous design. 
Um, like, the levels are really pretty. That animation back there... Um, was really pretty. Uh, this is also the episode that includes, uh, Mega Man's origin story. Um, as, uh, you kind of saw a little bit, um, in kind of, uh, the cold open. Which, kind of, uh, I have to, I have to say, like, also kind of feels like a bit of an oversight, you know, um... <laughs> That was the fir that was the first idea like that they kind of had just kind of going like hey we're we're four games in maybe we should kind of explain where this dude came from but that's another thing I uh, support I've talked about this a little bit in this series um, but so when it comes to tips or secrets in games oh before I get to that rush. How you doing, buddy? You want to play the riff to Working Man while I get up there? Thanks a lot, pal. <laughs> I am never going to let that joke go. You're going to have to pry that joke from my cold, dead hands. Um, so one thing uh, I've, I've said about video games, and unfortunately the original NES games were not very good at, is that... There's no problem with having a tip or a secret or something you have to unlock in the game. Uh, but the caveat to that is that the secret or solution must be present in the game somewhere. Uh, so you shouldn't have to look up the secret from an external source. You haven't, shouldn't have to look for a strategy guide. You shouldn't have to look from a you know, from a from a walkthrough or a Nintendo Power or something like that. It has to be in the game somewhere. Uh, and that can extend and that extends to story bits as well. So little bits of character or background or something like that. If it's in the game, if you think it's important, it should be in the game. Um and that's that's one thing that where Mega Man that kind of slowly started to develop over time, thankfully, but they obviously didn't have very present in the early ones, because games back then were all about the gameplay. You know, if you wanted a story, you went for a movie, or you went for a, a book or something like that. Um, and make no mistake, like, when it comes to a game, you know, a gameplay should come first, but, like, the story can inform so many different elements of that. And not to mention... If the story is important and you didn't include it in there, like, you kind of, you know, you don't get credit. You don't get credit for something you didn't include. Like, any, like, teacher would tell you, you know, if you thought it was important to your assignment, you should have put it in your assignment. That's kind of why, um, I get irritated with, uh, movie fans, like, um, especially for franchises like Star Trek or Star Wars or something like that. If there's something in the movies or the TV show that don't make sense. They'll go like, well, it was explained in this comic, or it was explained in this novelization, or even it was explained in a deleted scene that was included on the DVD. And I'm like, I don't give a shit. Like, if they thought it was important, they should have put it in the movie. You know, they should have put it in there. Um, I remember in particular, uh, the first J.J. Abrams Star Trek was really bad with that. Like, um, and, you know, I, uh, I'm not as hard on the J.J. Abrams Star Trek as some other people. I thought it was fine. But, um, like, you just buy that DVD and it just has so many deleted scenes that kind of, uh, explain certain plot points or elaborate on stuff that was just kind of, um, confusing. And so, I'd, I would just look at certain scenes and I'm like, why didn't you include that in there? That explains everything. <laughs> and he's dead. Great. And not to mention, um, it kind of explains why Winona Ryder was in that movie, because um, Winona Ryder uh, like, was supposed to play the younger version of um, Spock's mother. So like, you were supposed to see her when Spock was a kid, and then he grows up, and she's still there, but she's an old person makeup now, so that at least kind of makes sense. But as it is in the final movie, you just see Winona Ryder in the old person makeup. So you're just like, why didn't you just cast an old person? <laughs> like, I think in real life, um, Winona Ryder is only something like six years older than Zachary Quinto or something like that. Uh, but I digress. 
Oh, it did. Sorry about that. I, I, I'm still playing this on the Legacy Collection, and it has the rewind feature, but um, I'm purposefully trying to uh, avoid that because I just want to play this uh, old school. And kind of going on another rant, um, they include the uh, Capcom includes the rewind feature in a lot of their uh, re-releases. Uh, they included it in the Disney Afternoon Collection. Uh, which they also have available on Steam, um, which I'm hoping to get hoping to get to. I want to uh, play that soon before long. Um, but they just included the rewind feature so you don't die, and I'm like, the the okay. First of all, that it feels a little insulting because these games aren't that difficult. Like I won't say they're complete walks in the park or anything, but I. Uh, do they assume that just, like, the current generation of gamers, like, are gonna find this so impenetrable and so difficult that you need just, like, a little, you know, undo the oopsie button? It's not- you can't even say it's, like, a Sands of Time or, like, a game where reversing time is, like, a mechanic. Because everything about Sands of Time, like, the gameplay is built around that. Oh, shit, I just- whoop! <laughs> <laughs> I missed the extra life, and I almost desperately needed it for a second there, but I'm okay now. I don't know. Uh, make, make no mistake. Like, there's plenty of stuff from the uh, NES generation that is, like, unreasonably hard, but I don't think, you know, Mega Man or off the top of my head, like, the fucking DuckTales game is unreasonably hard. Um, and something funny, uh... Of the Disney Afternoon Collection, I'm probably going to be playing uh, DuckTales first, because uh, they finally announced that uh, DuckTales is coming back from hiatus next month. Uh, yay! Uh, and there's kind of a thing in there where you get a special ending depending on how much gold you uh, accumulate. Um, so they say the best ending is where you just like um, get as much money as possible. But I put it to you that it's actually harder to avoid a bunch of the money in the jewels. So really, the true hard ending should be just, like, you get as little money as possible, and, um... You just end up, like, broke at the end of the game. It's kind of one of those weird things where failure is actually the more difficult option. <laughs> I, I wonder if the mic actually picked that up. Just me just rapid fire hitting the X button while I shot him. He didn't even get a single hit out. Aw, <laughs> oh, Pharaoh man, I thought you were supposed to be a badass. Um, and on that note, I think this is actually a perfect place to uh, end this first episode. So, um... We're doing this thing, we're completing this game. Um, hope you guys are enjoying it so far. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>